Hi everybody, Lisa over at I Repair on Devices, and today my workbench, I will be looking at this Bose three disc CD changer. Now, let's see, this unit was shipped up from Alabama. Crimson Tide, Roll Tide, baby. Mm, love my football. Let's see, customer indicates. All right, one. There is a stuck CD. We went and inserted a CD. CD was inserted. Started making a loud clinking noise. Clinking. <laughs> uh, clinking noise and will not eject. Me and my wife found your YouTube channel. And we saw two of the Bose repairs that you've done. And we decided to ship this unit up to you to see if you can help us out. By the way, we think that you you are doing a great job. We wish you nothing but success. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I do appreciate your compliment. Uh, I am trying to get more videos out. Um, it is a little hard. I have yet to go live um, just because of the fear of, I just have a fear of public speaking. So um, even doing pre-recorded videos, it's a little, it's a little, uh, I get nervous. So uh, let's see what we have started here. Now, normally, if there is a problem with the, the units, I normally uh, plug it in and see what's going on. But because there is a CD stuck in there, I don't want to turn it on. I don't want to cause any additional uh, or possible further damage to the unit. So I'm not going to uh, turn it on. I trust what he says, that it's making a clanking noise and that there there is a CD in there. So um, I'm just going to flip it over and just start removing the screws from here from the housing for those that do know me when i uh a few seconds ago when i said uh, gave a shout out to roll tide uh, people that do know me know that i do love my sports i am a football and a hockey fan um i like my college games college football pro football and hockey now when it comes to college the team i have been file fi following for several years now has been uh bama uh, alabama crimson um, i just think they have a great football program i like coach saban um, i think he does a great job uh when it comes to pro, I gotta stick to my hometown, Chicago Bears. Uh, we'll see what this season brings. Having a new coach, new young quarterback, and then hockey again. Gotta stick to my hometown, Chicago Hawks. Um, yeah, this gal loves her sports. That's for sure. One last screw here, and we'll at least get the top taken off. Now, when you go to remove the top, there is going to be a ribbon cable, so you got to be careful lifting it up. Oop, a little bit more careful than that. And then just disconnect the cable. All right. And as you can see, the CD is indeed stuck. So I'm just going to just pull on it, pull it out gently, and just put it in with their paperwork. All right, next up is I'm going to remove it from the housing. I want to take a look underneath um, the unit. you got gears all over the place, so um, take a look at the gears. I want to take a look at the mechanism here that... that raises up and down i want to check the arms that that pull the cds in and out so there could be several things going on here causing um, the issue that the customer indicated so Got a ribbon cable here. Pull him. All right, so he's free from the housing. 
Now this unit, uh, I should have said in the beginning, um, goes with the AWR uh, CC models. Now there is a CC1 and a CC2 when I'm talking about the main unit up here. Uh, this is my test unit. Um, difference between the one and the two is just the color. CC two is the white, which is I have, which which I have, and then the CC one is the black. Uh, the internals are the same, um, other than just the color. So this guy actually can still plug into here, and I still can test everything. So um, that's the only difference between the two models. All right. So now here is the mechanism out of place or out of the housing. So first, I'm going to check the uh, this drive mechanism that raises and lowers when the CD is put into place. I want to make sure that it's being fed up and down the rails, that it's going smoothly. And what I'm talking about is this guy right here. So there's a brake on the bottom here. So when you go and, and uh, release the brake, engage the brake, actually frees it up so now I can manually roll the gears and have this guy go up and down and what I'm looking for is making sure everything is straight when it hits the top and then I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom making sure that it all that you know what you're looking for is that these worm gears are all staying in alignment when it's going when it's being fed up and down and I'm not feeling any resistance. I feel good. I don't feel any tension. I feel a good, um, smooth ride up and down these rails. So I'm going to say this guy looks good. Next up is I'm going to remove this bracket right here. I want to look at these arms, these armatures that, 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 pull the CD in and out. Uh, you got a couple of, um, what do I want to say, rollers that run along these rails. So I'm going to take a look at that. And then also, I don't know how clear this would be. Uh, it's kind of dark. Um, right here, uh, I know it's dark. Oh, I need to get some, get some more lighting in here. Oh, you know what? Let's see here. There you go. I'll bring this guy over here. Oop. See what I can do. Nah, it's not going to reach. Well, that's not going to work. Anyways, you have to trust me. These are. Uh, let me take off the bracket. Get, you can get a better sense of what I'm talking about here. So I got. What are we both writing? So put this screw here. Got the five screws taken out and remove the top bracket. There you go. Put it off to the side. And then there's another piece here I'm going to pull out. I don't need him in there while testing this. So as I was showing a little a few seconds ago, when the CDs are put into place, you got these rollers that, that ride along this rail here. And this rail then um, gets pulled into place. Let me get my other hand here. Uh, pulled into place and then it gets fed along the um, underneath here for the lens and when these uh, when this happens when this is getting pulled on the back side here there's three switches and when when this arm is being pulled in it actually closes this switch to indicate that that drive is active and then when the when the arm is pulled out when the, when the CD is pulled out, the arm swings away, and then the arm is going in the opposite direction and turns the switch off. So, um, and then you have gears 
within here which which is hard to see in, underneath his bracket so sometimes the gears the grease can actually start getting uh dried up over time or um the gears can wear out get dried up or we can have um the arms aren't aren't straight so um so i'm just going to do some visuals here and take a look and see and I can see the problem right now. This arm, see here, this top arm where the CD was in. Let's get better on camera here. He's bent. And what's happening is it's it's getting stuck and it's not going anywhere. So when this when this is trying to go up and down, he it's trying to grab the CD, but this arm is getting stuck, and that's what's making the the clanking noise. And it's stuck, and it doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know to eject. It doesn't know it doesn't know to go any further because it's like stuck in the middle. So what I need to do is I need to get this guy lined up back, uh, straightened out again. So. What I need to do is just get my plastic spudgy here. And you have to be careful. You don't want to, um, this is real thin. I think it's aluminum. Um, it could be real thin metal. But you got to be very careful when you're trying to uh, realign the, the, the bends because you don't want to put any creases in there. Because what happens is when you have the roller that that's rolling along the the arm here if there's any dips or any any indents it's not going to have that smooth ride and it's going to get it's going to get bind up it's going to bind up and that you're going to continue having problems there so when you're going to uh, get these back straight you got to be very careful not to put any bends or any dents in there so you just got to just work slowly and just take your time. Yeah, so to go back to the sports thing, um, it's, it's pretty cool. On my 20th, 21st birthday, my brother surprised me with uh, some Blackhawk tickets. First hockey game I ever went to. And I remember him and my dad always listening to the games uh, back on the radio. And to this day, there's times I'll listen to the game on the radio because the announcers, uh, I, I don't know who they are, um, but I actually, when they are, tell, are you know, um, relaying the game to you, you could feel you're there. And, and when they do that, and I feel like I'm there and I can visually see what's going on, you're doing a great job, you know? So... Anyways, my brother surprised me with some tickets, and um, I thought they were decent seats. We were just off to the side uh, from from the uh, behind the goal goalie, and we were sitting just right above the glass, which I was kind of like, "Oh crap, we're gonna see some uh, hockey pucks up our way," and and only two came our way. Uh, scared the crap out of me, but still, it was, it was a great time. But uh, before the game got started, my brother just looked at me and says, "Be prepared." That's all he would say. I'm like, okay, dude, don't know what you're talking about, but okay. And uh, all of a sudden, lights go off. The cloud just the the crowd starts getting loud. All of a sudden, Wayne Mesmer comes on and starts singing the national anthem. Holy crap! The place just rocked. I had goose. I'm having goosebumps now. The I had goosebumps. My body, the hair on my arms were standing up. The place just rocked. People were stomping, yelling, and cheering. I had no idea they did this. Had no idea they did this. And it was freaking awesome. If, ah, oh, it was just, and to this day, he, he since retired. So James, uh, I'm sorry, Jim Cor uh, Cornelison uh, now does it. And he has done several of the Chicago, not several, I should, I should say a couple of the Chicago Bear uh, home games. And I'll tell you, even at 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 um, at Soldiers Field, the place is rocking, and it is just crazy. And it's funny when I 
see other um, uh, arenas hold a national anthem, like, eh, it's too quiet. It's too quiet. I am so used to this, and I love it. Even at the house here when I get the game on TV, I am just, it just sends goosebumps to me. And if you could check it out, if you, if you could check out a Blackhawks game, you have to experience one uh one in your life once in your lifetime you have to or just do a youtube uh search on on uh um black hawks i don't know what you look up national anthem it's just crazy i love it i love it i love my sports um so let's get back to this here i don't, I don't want to get sidetracked it sidetracked so right now I'm just I'm just pressing uh, real carefully around uh, down the arm here, just trying to get alignment. And again, it's going to take a couple of times just to get it right. And what I'm going to do is just constantly um, feed a CD in. And once I know I have it right, it's not going to get stuck. So um, it's not just a, a simple bend and you're done. It takes a little bit just to get that crease just right because these rollers have to ride just right along the rails here so he still seems a little snug yeah all right let's, let's get some visual here all right I am liking that. All right, let's try it now. Let's just... And what's going to happen is, I know it's going to be hard to see. Like I said, the CD is going to roll along. Take the, you know, this roller is going to feed it in along the rail, and then at the at the tip here, there's like a little indentation where this roller is going to stop and kind of like lock in the place. All right, and then what happens is it gets fed in further, and then this takes over and, and starts spinning. So then when it starts, and then when you go to eject, what's what's supposed to happen is this is this all should come with it. All right, which is which it does now. But before it was it was staying in that stuck position. And I've done, you know, quite a few of these repairs. And when when the lid is on, you you, you could sense the rollers are doing what they're doing because you can feel the tension that that it's happening. So when I have the lid on here, I know okay, I'm pushing it in. It's hitting the it's hitting the back track, the back of the um, arm there, and I know it's in that divot point. And when I pull it out, I can feel that tension release. So I know it's doing its job, and I could do it down in slots three and four. You start knowing the internals of a unit that you've worked on on several you know several. Of them, you start to understand what's going on inside without looking. You can you can feel, and I'm feeling exactly what I should be feeling. The rollers engaging to a point, and then re I should hear a couple uh, hear the click when it when it's being pulled back. So, and it's not getting hung up anymore. I can go in and out real quick. So I feel. The real test is once I get it back in the housing and powered on to make sure that it is going to feed in and it is going to spin and and sound will come out. So, um, like I says, I so far I do like how how much I uh, straightened it out. So I don't want to uh, mess around with that too much. So what I'm going to do is I need to put these brackets back on here, and then I'm going to just. Uh, Put it back in the housing, plug it in, and then see if we can get the CD to, um, you know, insert, spin, get some sound, and then eject without being hung up. So let's just get this in here. I've been getting, I've been getting several of these Bose uh, systems in here. Are I actually had a package come today. Uh, I believe there's three in that box there. It's from Florida. Uh, one came in the other day from Missouri. So um, if I can get these fixed and back to the customer, I feel like I saved, you know, saved them from going to the landfill. So I feel pretty good if I can get something back, bring it back to life. So 
All right, let's get the bracket back on here. Now I do want to get these screws back in the place because these kind of hold down the arms and and whatnot. So I do want to make sure I get these back. Let's get them nice and snug. Okay, let's get it back in the housing here. Let's get the cable plugged in. Let's get the top. Alright. I hate that they don't give you a long ribbon cable here and you're trying to don't give you much room either to get your hands in there there we go oh wow first try wow that's a first all right lid is on i'm not going to put any of the screws in just in case i have to do any additional tweaking but at least it's enough for me to get this guy powered on so set this unit the main unit up here plug in the two adapters on the cords back here let's get the power fed to it now, once I get it plugged in, it's going to automatically um, initialize the drives here. So we're going to see, you're going to hear a bunch of uh, noise. And what's happening is the, um, the drive mechanism is, is going up and down to, to, to uh, initialize each of the drives. And then uh, once it's done, lights will go off and it'll be ready for me to uh, test the CD. So... And and it's going up and down each of the drives. And you can hear the arms going in and out. When you hear that clicking, you can hear the now the drive mechanism is going down. The first the first uh, few seconds of the sounds were those arms clicking in and out, hitting that switch on the side that you couldn't see. Once it did that, then the drive mechanism uh, raises and lowers and it gets in it gets in position. So now that this is ready to go. And let's put it in drive one. Now, this is a Bose uh, music system. This is my test CD. Um, I don't think it will be flagged, but I'm not going to play it long enough. I, I don't want to get my video flagged for uh, copyright infringement. So I'm just going to just, plug, uh, just pop it in. And it's reading the disc, and we should hear some sound come from it. Okay, let's see. Okay, oh, got a rooster there. All right, that was kind of interesting. Let's try. All right, that was drive two, disc two, and that's where the CD was stuck in. All right, so now uh, let's go to disc three, drive three. Read in the CD. The mechanism is lowering to that position. All right. Stop it. We're going to eject. And two, we're looking for um, it, it's it's not getting it's not getting binded it's not getting bind uh, it's not binding up, and two we're not getting any disc errors. So we know that the mechanism is uh, leveled and it is riding up and down the rails um, correctly. 
Because if it wasn't, it'd come to this point where we would start seeing disk errors. All right. What else is on this CD? Let's go to track two. Oh, gotta hit play. No. Okay. That works. And let's go back to drive two. Let's just double check. Reading disc, spinning. All right, let's go. Let's go to. What's on track three? Hmm. Some bells. All right, so looks like, um, just to recap, the problem with this was that drive two, disc two, whatever you want to call it, the uh, armature that, that feeds in the CD was, was bent. And what was happening was when the CD was fed in, the, the roller got stuck almost at the end of that roller and, and it didn't know what to do. It, it didn't know to go any further and it couldn't get itself out and that was causing that the clinking noise because it was saying you know that because the cd is trying to play at the same time it's trying to grab it but it but it quite it couldn't quite get to it so um and it's just doing the visual of it you can clearly see that it was slightly bent in an upward position so what i did was i just straightened it out uh, making sure i didn't put any additional uh dents or creases in that material because that roller has to ride smoothly to and from the front and back without any types of div dips in, in, in along the way. Um, what I'm going to go uh, up through next is, uh, and I don't need to do this on videos. I'm just going to uh, check all the gears just to make sure, get them, uh, you know, apply any grease if need be. I will blow it out, clean out any dust. It looked it looked pretty clean in there. Um, but yeah, uh, this was a successful repair. I, I hope you learned something. I, I don't know if you will or not or did or not, but I, I do hope. Uh, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. And until next time, have a good one. Take care.